Guys, today Chiori Build Guide. First of all, the basics. She's a sub DPS whose majority of moves scale off both attack and defense. So the first question is which of the two stats should you prioritize? The answer is defense pretty much all the time, for mainly two reasons. The first is that their base defense is really, really high, much higher than the base attack, of course, and for the latter to ever catch up on that base defense value, you would have to give Chiori a weapon like Akira Favonia or Miss Splitter, so weapons that have a 674 attack, but as we'll see later, these are not really great options for her. Second, she simply has higher defensive scalings rather than attack scalings across the board, and this naturally makes defense the more valuable stat. Now, aside from this, Chiori is seemingly a pretty basic character, because uh, she's Geo, so she has no damaging reactions, and that means she doesn't have to care about elemental mastery, for example, and for the most part, she can only be used in a single role that is sub DPS, so just in theory, she shouldn't have that much variety in terms of builds, but in reality, she is more tricky than what it sounds. In fact, she can be built differently depending on the team you use her in, and one of the defining factors for this is actually her elemental burst. Let me remind you that if you enjoy my content but you haven't subbed yet, please consider doing so because it really helps me notice your support. Her elemental burst is a single hit nuke that can hit quite hard when properly buffed, but it does have an energy cost of course, so it comes with energy requirements. As of now, Churi's particle generation is rather low, one or two particles every 3.6 seconds, so she will need quite the energy production from the rest of the team to be able to burst without building a lot of energy recharge. On the Mono Geo teams, so her main niche, with characters like Ito, Zhongli, Albedo, Goro, it's pretty doable because in that scenario her energy requirements are very low. On teams like Navia Double Geo, it already starts looking more suspect because in that scenario her energy requirements increase and can even reach 150, a scenario where she will need an energy recharge stance most of the time. On these themes, bursting every other rotation becomes a pretty good option because the elemental skill remains the main source of her damage. By building energy you're benefiting the burst, but you're hurting the elemental skill damage because you're losing defensive stats for example, or something like that, so it's a trade-off you have to consider. I don't have a conclusive statement here, but the bursting every other rotation just seemed the more sensical option here to me. The interesting part here is that her elemental burst is a defining factor even when it comes to picking the best artifact set build. The main options here are the Golden Troop and the Husk set, and uh, both are rather equivalent when it comes to buffing the elemental skill damage. However, the Golden Troop set pretty much only buffs that, so that means that it is at a huge disadvantage compared to the Husk set when it comes to buffing the elemental burst. On the Mono Geo teams, so a scenario where you can easily burst every rotation with Chiori, this marks a more significant gap than on Navia teams. So basically, the more important the elemental burst is in your rotation, the stronger the husk set becomes compared to the golden troop set. The one interesting part about the golden troop set is that with some weapons that have high damage bonus value, like her signature as you will see later, a defense goblet can become pretty competitive with the damage bonus goblet, so uh, this can be interesting for some. Weapons wise, again, it depends. The main option for free to play is the Arpinger of Dawn, a 3 star weapon that has a pretty low base attack value but gives a lot of crit value, so it's great. The other option would be Spindle, a beta signature weapon that theoretically could seem very good for Shuri because it buffs elemental skill damage by a lot and gives a lot of defense as well. The issue here are the cooldowns of the elemental skill buffs from the weapon that will only apply every 1.5 seconds. On the mono Geo teams, so teams with constructs, she will be able to summon two puppets instead of one. But the main issue is that these two puppets will hit opponents pretty much at the same time. In those scenarios, Spindle's buffs will only apply to one of the two hits diminishing the impact the weapon has on her kit. Unironically, the Navia teams make this better because uh, there is no construct here, so that means only one puppet on field. In this situation, Spindle is able to buff relatively more elemental skill hits, so it gets closer to our Binger of Dawn. Of course, if you get the Constellation 1, that uh, pretty much makes her a full character on Navia teams as well, it's back to stage 0. Her signature is much stronger than these free-to-play options because uh, it gives a lot of crit damage, some defense for free, 
and also a lot of elemental skill damage bonus. And by the way, this is one of these scenarios I referenced before with the golden troop set, where the defense goblet becomes competitive with the damage bonus goblet because of the high damage bonus value this weapon has. Other than the signature, there are 5 star options that are pretty good, but uh, they're not much better than the free to play options, so it's not really an unfair gap. It's worth mentioning that if you plan to burst every rotation on Navia teams for example, so teams where she needs a lot of energy recharge, options like the festering desire become pretty good. And with this, I'm done for today. The other day I made this video where I compared Gaming to Hu Tao in terms of DPS, so please go check that out and uh, peace.